I need that money. I really, really do. I need that money. I, I really need that money. Really need that money. I need that money. I really, really do. I need that money. I, I really need that money. Really need that money. Really that money. That money. <clears throat> We've got Hellblade 2 on May 21st, the System Shock remake coming out for consoles on May 21st, Paper Mario and the Thousand Year Door remake on May 23rd, and Multiverses re-releasing on May 28th. So once we get to the last two weeks of May, we've got a ton of shit going on. But we have three empty weeks to start off May. So maybe it makes sense for me to then play Fallout 4 during that time period and balance it with the end of Elden Ring and balance it with Helldivers and balance it with Street Fighter 6. And if I play this crab game, maybe balance it with another crab's treasure, right? So here's the deal. I'm down for that. I'd be okay with playing Fallout 4 starting next week. If that's what people want, I'm okay with that. But I need to know if that's actually what you want. Keep in mind, we don't know how good this update's gonna be. And also from what everyone seems to think, this update will break all existing mods for the game meaning all those mods that have been added to Fallout 4 over the years will not work, and all the mod makers will have to find a way to patch their mods to work with this new version of the game. So, I'm not going to be able to play, play any mods. It's going to be vanilla, plain Fallout 4 with whatever this new update adds on that Thursday and go from there, okay? So, let me know what you think. I'm interested to hear your thoughts. I'm down for Fallout 4. I've only played it the once. I'd love to play it again and re-experience it now nine years later with a more modernized setup, live you know, stream, webcam, live interactive audience, it's going to be so much different from the original run that I did nine years ago, okay? But, kind of going back on the whole RPG overload idea, not to say that Fallout 4 is the traditional RPG in the way that say Final Fantasy 7 or Like a Dragon is, but it's still an RPG. But maybe after having a month away from RPGs, it would be time to have another one in the mix. Especially now, with the height of popularity of, of, of Fallout that's seeing in the mainstream gaming. In fact, we could use this to transition into our next subject matter. Fallout Mania that's going on right now. In general, the Fallout TV show has seen critical acclaim and viewer acclaim. Everyone seems to like the show, uh, with little exception. The little exception is people who just don't understand that not everything is woke just because it might have something that you don't seem mainstream acceptable. Like for example, I'm not kidding you. There's people who are saying the Fallout TV show sucks because it's woke because there's two couples in it that are interracial and there's a trans character. It's an eight hour show. There's one trans character in the entire cast. And by the way, they're a supporting character that's played incredibly well, fits into the story, has no bearing on the story that they're trans at all. They just exist in the universe just like anyone else, so it's not a plot point. It doesn't matter. There's two couples that are interracial. Wait a minute. We have problems with interracial couples in 2024? We do? In what universe is, is there something wrong with that? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, doesn't make sense to me. <laughs> like, maybe it's because I grew up on the East Coast and now I'm on the West Coast, correct? But for me, to see people of different races like getting involved in, in romantic relationships is like a common thing. This is not like, oh, I've never seen this before. This is not a big deal. I don't even see why this would be a big deal. You know what I'm saying? Like, it doesn't make sense at all Um, to me. I'm just scratching my head how does this affect the show or the quality of the show? These people are so obsessed with things that they're like, just because they exist, regardless of the fact that if they have a bearing on the show, affect the plot of the show in a negative way, which they don't, just because they exist on the show is an awful bad thing, and therefore the show is bad. That's just incredibly stupid. In my opinion, it's just a closed-minded thing to think that way. How could you think because there's interracial couples and in, in, in anything that it's bad. What, do, what does that say about you? <laughs> right? Where do you come from? Do you, go, do you live in a place where only people of the same race can be romantically involved? 
Uh, what kind of a society are you living in? What kind of an isolated culture? It's kind of fucking weird. I'm sorry, it just is. I'm not saying that every single thing should be dictated to be a mix of cultures or whatever, right? But just because it's in the show doesn't mean that it's bad. It just, it drives me nuts, these people, right? Anyway, um, outside of that very small group of people, everyone seems to like the show. Even those who are like the biggest fans of Fallout lore and are upset that the TV show either made mistakes with the lore or changed the lore. And I think that's really what it is. A lot of people are upset that certain things in the Fallout TV show aren't in line with the games. And now they're like, well, wait, Todd Howard is saying the TV show is canon. Does that mean it changes the lore of the games? Do you want to know the answer? Yes. It does mean that. It means that that's the lore they want to go with. Why? Because there's no fucking games out. The The newest game that you can play of Fallout, right, to tie in with seeing the show and falling in love with this universe is like seven years old. That's the newest one. So obviously they want to go with the lore of the show as the mainstream thing because we don't even know when we'll see another new Fallout game. What, another decade? So let the show be canon and then let the next games be in line with the show, right? I think that's what, what they're going for. And a lot of people are very upset about that because they were such adamant, staunch fans and scholars of the lore of the Fallout games and universe that to see that change for a TV show, they're like, I can't believe it. You know what these, these people are like? These are the same people, all right, who two generations ago would go to the Star Trek and Star Wars conventions and line up to see William Shatner or uh, Mark Hamill, and they would wait in line. And finally, when they get to see them, all right, they would have a giant folder, and they would slam the folder down in front of the desk in front of them where the person was sitting and say, in episode 272, there was a line of dialogue that's not in line with the Prime Directive. Now, you got to explain to me what this means. And the actor would be sitting there like, it's a show, dude. It's a TV show. It's fun. It's meant to be something for entertainment. It's not real. It doesn't have to be. It never was designed to be. What is wrong with you? You're not supposed to obsess over it like this. Okay? That's And of course, back then, these people were dismissed as obsessive people. Today, it's like cool to be like that. Because now you can go on the internet and join an online community like that. And you can completely obsess over something that's just supposed to be a part of pop culture and not the whole obsession of your life where every little detail of the universe must be in line and make sense. There's going to be things that don't jive. There's going to be things that can't be explained or don't line up. No one cares that much about it, including the fucking showrunners. Do you really think Todd Howard cares that there's a date in the show on a chalkboard that's not in line with the dates of the games? Do you think he gives two flaming shits? He doesn't care. He cares about the money that's being printed right now because people like the show. <laughs> anyway, so, all that being said, okay... <laughs> All that being said, Fallout Mania is real. And absolutely everyone is going crazy right now for Fallout Mania. Everyone wants Fallout. In fact, Fallout 76 numbers on Steam typically gets around 16 to 18,000 players. Now has like over 40,000. So it's almost tripled in the amount of player base. Uh, Fallout 4, for the first time ever, had over 100,000 concurrent players on Steam. Okay? So, there you go. And... That's pretty crazy um, to me that this insane amount of popularity is now coming to Fallout. And isn't it ironic? Because this is probably, right now with this TV show, no exaggeration, probably the biggest mainstream appeal Fallout's ever had. More people now are understanding how cool Fallout is for the very first time. And there's literally nothing else to consume that's less than seven years old. You want to talk about a mismanagement and a misstep? This is the direct... Hello everyone, Darkside Phil here. The only detractor channel that I watch is Doody Streams.